I'm Elisabetta Vignati and I'm working at the Joint Research Center, which is uh, one of the director generals of the European Commission. Uh, I'm really grateful for the previous speakers who actually introduced very well uh, the topic that I'm going to talk today and particularly showed already that while climate change is already happening and we know that, observations play really a very important role in, uh, first of all, understanding which are the processes and the causes of the climate change, showing what is really happening, showing also the impact that this may have on uh, the human activities. And therefore, the, the topic of my presentation is exactly looking at the observations, how much they cost, and then uh, what is uh, the benefit that uh, these observing systems uh, have on the society, particularly for the Arctic. So uh, all this work started uh, quite some time ago, exactly, at the Arctic Observing uh, Summit in 2016. It was uh, clearly said uh, in uh, the end of the summit that it was important to, to actually prepare a business case uh, for the observing systems. And this uh, business case had the duty to evaluate the cost of these uh, systems, but particularly addressing and understanding and evaluating their benefits uh, for the society and the activity within the Arctic. This was also one of the outcome of the first Arctic Science Ministerial meeting who took place in Washington. From then on, the European Commission started to work and then prepared a new framework, a new methodology for the evaluation of uh, such, a, uh, such a case. And then uh, this uh, work was also fed uh, later this year in the preparation of uh, the Arctic Science Forum, who took place, which took place in Berlin in 2018. Um, we had only one year to do this job, so it was not really a long time, but no doubt that uh, the work of the um, impact of uh, climate change was uh, and is uh, impacting the uh, activities, uh, the human activities in the Arctic. And therefore, the social benefits that we could look at were really many. But as the time was short, we had to select the cases on which this evaluation could be made rightly in time. And then we consulted with the representative of the uh, Arctic science community, as well as with the Arctic stakeholders. And we identified 10 cases going under particularly five areas, looking at the impact of the sea ice, the permafrost changing, the human dimension, the bio biodiversity and the sea level rise where uh, the um, activities uh, were already being impacted by the climate change. And the choice of all these uh, uh, cases were done uh, to be sure that they were really, um, first of all, uh, all these activities uh, were very sensitive and relevant for uh, the climate change that was happening. They, they were containing a possibility of quantify uh, uh, benefits and also consider the benefits that uh, we could not quantify that were also using a large variety of uh, the observing systems and at the end uh, these uh, cases uh, were covering basically all the uh, 12 societal benefit areas. These areas uh, were exactly identified in 2017 and then you find them in International Arctic Observations Assessment Framework. This framework was a very important work because actually it linked these societal benefit areas with the observations through a series of chain. And in our study, we looked particularly to uh, two families of observations, the remote sensing observation containing the global satellite, the polar satellite, and also the airborne measurements, uh, and the ra marine radars, as well as in the in situ measurements. So particularly looking at the, the atmosphere, the underwater measurements, and also the measurements uh, in the icebreakers. We evaluated then the cost and the benefits, and the task was not easy, I must say. But let's start with, with the cost of all the observing systems. First of all, we had to calculate the capital cost and the, the running cost, the operating cost. And the capital cost covered 
uh, a cost starting from the research and design of the observing system and including their realization. And then uh, we had to evaluate these costs and make them on an annual basis. Now, we had uh, for some of these uh, systems, observing systems that they are covering in areas that is uh, larger than the Arctic, we had to make an assumption how much of these uh, systems were really important for the Arctic. And that assumption really gave rise to a range of uh, percentage that these uh, systems uh, were actually important for the Arctic. And this uh, percentage, this range of percentage is really reflected then in the range of the estimated cost. Did you find uh, here, these are the estimated cost uh, uh, for here, and they're spanning between 70 and 135 million euros. The most, uh, uh, um, expensive of uh, this uh, observing system are the global satellite uh, as well as uh, the ice breaker um, research. Even the economic benefit evaluation was not at all uh, easy uh, because uh, um, there were many, many activities that they were already uh, could be considered for the impact of the climate change. And then uh, we had uh, to uh, look particularly on the activities that uh, were related to the human activities, so the benefits were calculated for that. We didn't include in this analysis uh, the benefits uh, the, due to the avoid of the damage and the loss of the ecosystems, and as well as we didn't include the uh, benefits that they were uh, due to year life lost uh, um, uh, avoidance of uh, this system. We had also to make assumptions for the future of these activities, the human activities. And then uh, we went uh, through different scenarios, going from a very, very conservative one, in which uh, we assume that uh, all these activities are slowing down in the future, ha to the ones that uh, were the most optimistic, where all these uh, human activities were actually going up faster in the future compared to what we have predicted already. And this uh, gives uh, uh, as, uh, the impact, of this estimated benefit range that you find below between 183 to 341. If we balance, if we look at together, if we compare these uh, benefits and the costs, we see immediately that even if we consider the benefits calculated in the most conservative way, there is absolutely a positive return in the investment. And particularly, we could evaluate that uh, indeed, in this uh, most conservative one, the economic benefits exceed at least 50% of the investment. It means that for every euro or dollar that is invested, the economic return is 1.5 euro of dollars. And then uh, additional benefits can be even uh, added if we include all the other societal benefit areas that we didn't include in the studies, as well as the fact that the um, measurements and the observations done in the Arctic uh, also have an impact uh, at the regional and global scale. So uh, with that, I would like to conclude my talk uh, saying that uh, all these results are published and you can find the results in the link uh, uh, that you find in the slides. But also if you are interested in more details on the uh, um, evaluation as well as uh, the methodologies that they were used, I have also copies of uh, the report with myself. And with, with that, I thank you very much for your attention.